ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Las Vegas. This is the Mark Hope Show. The Mark Hope Show. Filled with wrestling news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises from inside the squared circle. Now, let's bring on the tag team of Andrew Fish Fame. Joe DeFalco, and your host, Mark Hoke. All right, everybody, what's going on? Hey, Las Vegas, we're doing our thing. It is the Mark Hoke Show on KDWN, 101.5 FM, 720 AM, the talk of Las Vegas. I am Mark Hoke. Thanks for being with us as we bring you all the news from the ring. Andrew Fish Fain. Sitting right across from me, Big Fish. Welcome back. We missed you. Thank you. It's good to be back. Are you sure? Oh yeah. Okay. Just double checking. And then, of course, we've got our good friend from Future Stars of Wrestling. He is the Master, the Overlord, the King, Joe DeFalco. Everybody, Joe, what's going on? Uh, I was just trying to wonder what the assignment that Fish was on last week. It was never disclosed on the air. You know. Fish, what was what was your assignment? Uh, I can't tell you. I mean, I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. Oh, stop it. It's top secret. It was not top secret. You're lying. I was in Los Angeles. Yeah, you were you were gone. Scouting the competition. <laughs> Who was that? I don't know. I haven't figured that part out yet. <laughs> was Brian Alvarez hanging out in L.A.? No, it was, D- it was Uncle Dave. It was Uncle Dave. Oh, Uncle Dave was over there? Yeah. Did you say hi to Uncle Dave for us? No, I just, you know, Panama Sun Sunrise. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Spanish fly. You know, it was over. Okay, gotcha. Wait, wait, so you're telling me you beat up Dave Meltzer? Oh, well, yeah, sort of like the New Day did last night. You you had Dave Meltzer in L.A. and you pounded him into the ground. One had to. One, one gets tired of his five-star ratings or lack thereof. Well, that wasn't very nice, but anyway. If, if you're not a wrestling fan and you don't know who Dave Meltzer is and uh, Brian Alvarez are from Wrestling Observer, probably the, the top news source in professional wrestling. So, hi, guys. <laughs> hope it's going hope you're doing okay fish is just trying to threaten the entire wrestling world with violence i'll see i want to see how many of them come out next week to the meet and greet yeah yeah don't forget everybody we are going to be at the unique eats on 3100 south durango from noon to 1 30 post meridian here in las vegas we would be thrilled to have you join us it's going to be a great time out there and we've got some gift certificates to give away, 15% off your meals, jazz, booze. Yes. And, and I hear that Santa may be making an appearance as well. So, Fish, if there's somebody you're going to attack, there's your opportunity. Well, it depends on who who's wearing these Santa costumes. Well, actually, I think it's the jazz musician. So, oh, please. So, so then so I want to attack him. See? Yeah, don't, don't ruin me. Yeah, you see, it could have happened, and that would have been bad, and it would have all been your fault. Yeah, please don't do that. Now, Joe DeFalco, I don't know if we can keep control of. But, but Joe, are you going to be able to make it? I know you've got the big card coming up on Saturday night, but are you going to come up and have a little food uh, food with us? Uh, still undecided at this point. Okay. Well, Depending on schedule stuff. Th- there'll be a spot at the table next to us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Bring your 8x10s so you can sign them. <laughs> there you go. Joe, do you have 8x10s to give out? Uh, I do not. I, uh, <laughs> I am not. I am not the talent. No, we can. Uh, th- th- that's debatable. I-, I think you are absolutely the talent. Well, on this show, he's the talent. Just in life, he's the talent. Yeah. Well, we're we're all the talent. He's the Joe DeFalco. Yeah. So, and of course, if you want to see everything Joe's got going with future stars of wrestling here in town, go to fswvegas.com. Take a look. Absolutely. Big, big card coming up on uh, next Saturday night. So. Yeah, b- big week for the uh, FSW crew throughout the uh, the week. Yeah, every- F- FSW alum. Everybody was busy. Busy, yeah, busy, busy. Chris Bay. Chris Bay in the uh, finals at the New Japan Super Tag. And I believe Brian Cage now has a belt, does he not? Brian Cage does have a title. Boy, it, You know, it seemed like the pay-per-views were over, but then, of course, we had this NXT event and we had... The Ring of Honor final battle, which got rave reviews as well from last night. But uh, some interesting developments with Ring of Honor we'll talk about. But the first thing that I wanted to mention before we dive headfirst into all that, I want to take a second to wish Barry Windham all the best. Of course, last Friday, Barry had another heart attack and was taken to the hospital and put in ICU. 
Uh, but he has apparently he had a procedure done to get him back on track and he is home recuperating, doing okay. But there was an interesting story that Bray Wyatt, of course, who is his nephew, said that a bystander saved Barry and he didn't have a pulse for 10 minutes. Wow. 10 minutes. That, that's quite a long time. That is uh, that is a long time to not have things rolling the way they're supposed to. Yeah, apparently a gentleman uh, by the name of Michael Todd Lalek was there and gave him CPR through the entire time until the EMTs got there. So You think the, he got some free Bray Wyatt gear? <laughs> he may get a little more than that. <laughs> but So the former member of the Four Horsemen and the U.S. Express... Saved by a bystander, guys. Wow. And he, he wasn't at Peekaboo Hospital, though, because if he was, he'd be at Peekaboo ICU. What the? <laughs> and microphone <laughs> off. Boom. But, yeah, we want to wish wish Barry and, of course, the Wyndham and the Rotunda family all the best. You know, of course, Barry, to me, uh, you know, of course, I remember the, the U.S. Express tag team with Mike, Mike Rotunda a lot, but uh, some people are – Forgetting about the amazing matches that he had with Ric Flair, those series of sixty-minute Broadways were incredible. Yeah, and, and, you know, wasn't he in the new Blackjacks as well? Um, that wouldn't surprise me. But uh, yeah, he, <laughs> I mean, when, back when I first started watching wrestling, and it was him and Mike Rotunda of the U.S. Express taking on uh, the Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov. It was that, that's one of the things that got me into wrestling was you know the the, the whole patriotism behind it because it was very we were very big obviously against the, the Cold War was going on against Iran and Russia so the you know WWE had to play up that angle but Wyndham was always larger than life yeah and he was absolutely amazing it was nice that he finally did get the get a world championship but uh, Joe what are your memories of, of Barry Wyndham? Uh, I just remember him in the uh, the NWA days, watching him on uh, the TBS Superstation, and was really excited when he became the Widowmaker. And I thought it was going to be a really big deal, and it it just never did. No, oh, that was terrible. I mean, he also had that really bad run when he came back to WWE. He was just as the Army guy. With yeah, the, the Widowmaker thing. Yeah, that's, that, that was that's that was, was the Widowmaker. Yes. Okay, it was so bad I couldn't even remember the name. No, it was <laughs> it was not good, and uh, but. But, of course, Barry, one of the best wrestlers of all time, and we want to wish him all the best as speedy he recovers. speedy recovery. So, so and take care of yourself, buddy. Come well, on, I'm, we I'm don't guessing wanna... he's not going to come out as Uncle Howdy. Uh, not this week. <laughs> well, this will be the second time that he was on, uh, you know, death's door and somehow seemed to uh, evade it, kind of like Ric Flair. Yeah, this and this one obviously really bad, so. Take it easy, Barry, and uh, you know get better, and uh, hopefully everything's going to be all right. So, but uh, there was another uh, person here in Las Vegas, by the way. It's not just the three of us. Did you happen to see a certain Maxwell Jacob Friedman made an appearance here in town last night? I did not. You did not. No, and I love love me some MJF. Joe, did you see that Mister Friedman was here? I did not either. Well, Maxwell Jacob Friedman was at the UFC card last night. Was was the, that one of the events that uh, CM Punk was helping with the broadcast on, too? No. Okay, because he, he's been doing that of late. No, but he has been on a little social media Twitter feud with uh, UFC superstar Patty Pimblett, who had a rather controversial match last night. But they have been going back and forth, and MJF was, uh, I would imagine, a guest of honor of Mr. Dana White. As he attended, carrying around the AEW title, and was kind of still lipping off to Mister Pimblet. So, guys, we, could we possibly be seeing MJF tangling with a UFC fighter at some point here in AEW? Is that sort of uh, our our version of Gorilla Monsoon versus Muhammad Ali? Um, I don't know about that, but I don't know about that. But uh, that, but well, if they want to expose their champion, sure. I guess the AEW is welcome to do that. It sounds like something Tony Khan would do. Well, we've, of course, seen WWE messing around with the guys at UFC, too. So everyone's a little guilty on that. But th but there is a pretty big connection. You know, Dan Lambert, of course, you know, isn't just a goofy manager. I mean, he trains MMA fighters with America's top team down there in Florida. So he's, you know, these guys have been uh, together for a while. So this is kind of interesting to see if we're going to be getting a 
MJF Patty Pimblet situation. So watch out for that one. But I, I will say that uh, another brilliant promo on Wednesday by MJF and the response by Ricky Starks was was absolutely phenomenal. That's the best I've ever heard, Ricky Starks. What a lead to where I was going to go next, Fish. That was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It's almost because, like I knew. Yeah, well, of course, MJF will be defending his title against said Ricky Starks on Wednesday at Winners Coming on uh, AEW and TV. And that was... Uh, that was a pretty good promo. If you know, we were talking last week that nobody really cared about Ricky Starks in this match, but I have a feeling people are gonna care now because that was one of the better promos I've seen in quite a while. Yeah, it's it's sort of like the the old saying: "The rising tide raises all boats." Because that's what's happened. MJF just has brought Ricky Starks' game up. Yeah, I mean, Ricky was ready. And uh, Joe, what did you think of that promo? Well, I think Ricky Starks has a lot of upside, but. Like right now, the way they they've pushed MJF, it's it's just okay. It, it, it's great and all, but I don't believe people are going to buy into the fact that Ricky Starks is going to be the AEW champ. So I I think that makes it a little difficult when you go into a match totally believing that this guy's got no shot. Yeah, there there was one thing that did bother me about what happened that night because he did win the battle royal to wrestle him for the that dynamite diamond ring that MJF has won the last three years. And apparently, instead of doing two separate matches for this, they're going to combine it into one. I didn't like that. I thought, I thought, you know, here's a chance if Ricky, you, you know, I you know it would hurt a, it would hurt MJF a little bit to lose a match, but at the same time, you know, giving Ricky that diamond ring and running around would have elevated Ricky a lot. And even if he loses the second time around, you know, it would have it would have elevated Ricky. So yeah, um, at least MJF would get to keep the title. But right, but of course, but of course, there's a. I didn't hear a stipulation for the ring that it has to be a pinfall or a submission to win the match. So in other words, if Ricky Starks wins by DQ, I didn't. Hear, he could still get the ring, but he wouldn't get the belt. I didn't hear anything different. So I, yeah. I I'm curious isn't about it, that. Isn't that the same ring that we were wondering if it was with it was a title shot that it was so unexplained that nobody understood the the meaning of having the ring? Yeah, something like that. Pretty much. It, yeah. It's, so it, it's just another another thing in AEW that it's kind of like, well, oh, what does it mean to have it? Yeah, he's had it, and what has he done with it? I'm not having a match for it. Well, what was the sense of having it in the first place? What did he get you? Well, it's a, it's a nice ring. <laughs> it's, I, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's darn I purdy. He can, give it, he can give it to his girlfriend, sure. Yeah, there you go. I mean, you know, it's 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 cool. It's cool. It's you a know, good maybe weapon. Sammy Guevara could win it and give it to his girl. Oh, they got married. Yeah, right? too Never late. Mind. Too late. Well, he could still give it to his girlfriend, even if he doesn't give it to his wife. No, but right, because that way, when he did, when he breaks up with her, he could take it back. Exactly. But there is an interesting thing that I want to point out on this too, because if that is a stipulation. Let's say Mr. Starks wins this match by a DQ or a count out or something along those lines. I'd just like to point out on betonline.ag, where, of course, if you go to markhokeshow.com and sign up for a membership, you're going to get up to 500 bucks on $1,000 deposits, 50%, which is pretty cool. MJF is a minus 5,000 to win this match. Ricky Starks is a plus 900. But that's not taking doesn't seem to be taking into account the possibility of a DQ in this match. Would you guys bet this and take a stab at it? No, no. MJF is not that. If they have MJF lose, that would be just horrible booking. Regardless, well, regardless of how they have him lose, whether it's DQ count out, whatever. Well, I, I wouldn't have a problem with. I mean, if he loses by DQ, I mean they're they're building the feud. I mean, what would what would that hurt? It, it because. Your chan- especially with this is one of his first title defenses, he can't. You you have to have him look strong as anything and not and, and cheat and de- getting loose losing by DQ or a count out or anything that effect does not make him look strong. Uh, geez, Ric Flair made a career of losing matches on count outs and DQs. Yeah, but that was also how long ago? But I'm I'm just saying. I mean, you can. But, you but it was also non televised events at house shows that he would wrestle seven days a week. So yeah, well, I don't know. Maybe you ought to take a look and throw five bucks down and see if you can get that. Plus well, I was going to say, you know, 
ten, right, ten bucks to win ninety. I guess you know, or I, I've wasted money on bets and gambling on far less opportunities in the past. So, you know, to say he can't win by count out or, or GQ is like, where are they going after that? If 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 MJF pins Ricky Starks, wouldn't the feud be over? You would think, right? So. You know, maybe the idea is to, you know, keep it going a little bit or maybe somebody else gets involved and by somebody else getting involved, that that could lead to the DQ or the count out or, or whatever they're doing. It, it's definitely not something that they they can't do. You know, we've seen that happen in a lot of matches that you expect somebody to win, you know, Hulk Hogan's another guy who used to make a living of, of get, that's how their feud would lead to the steel cage at Madison square garden. You know, he would have to somehow lose by count out or DQ just to keep things going. But nowadays it's weird. It's like, you know, you wrestle the champ, you lose, and then somehow you still get a title match after that. So, you know, it's kind of, no. Wonky. In, in I think we all agree that Ricky get... Starks ha- has a big future with with AEW, but I'm not sure that he's the guy right now that they want to push as the number one contender to have start having a series of matches with MJF. I think there are other guys that are ahead of him, which is why I don't necessarily think they want to get Starks involved in in a long term feud with MJF right now. Yeah, but it's, well, it's, it's definitely it's, obvious that uh, Tony Khan's a big fan of Ricky Starks, so you know why not pull the trigger and hopefully create a new star, you know, that if that's, you know, if that's the game plan, you know, give the guy the rub, you know, they had to beat what uh, Lance Hoyt. He got to beat Brian cage. You know, he got to beat two guys that are monsters compared to him. So obviously he's uh, a guy that they really want to invest in. Yep. So we'll see what happens with, Absolute Ricky Starks and MJF coming up on Wednesday. We're going to talk a little bit about what happened last night. Of course, a big NXT card with a special match, if you didn't get to catch that, and a pretty wild night with the Ring of Honor. So stick around, everybody. We're going to have more on the Mark Oak Show. Stick around there on KDWN. We'll be right back. When it comes to having the right attorney in your corner, you will want to have a proven winner on your side. And Russell Dutch Boyd of VegasCouncil.com knows how to win in Las Vegas. Boyd graduated at 18 years old from law school and is also a three-time World Series of Poker bracelet winner. And no matter what legal challenges you're facing, Boyd will help you through it all. As a litigation attorney, he covers multiple areas of law, including personal injury, business law and startup, cyber law, and crypto clients, and whatever else you might need to navigate the legal waters of Las Vegas and beyond. Just visit VegasCouncil.com to set up your free initial consultation today. That's VegasCouncil.com, and let Dutch Boyd help you win today. Once again, that's Russell Boyd at VegasCouncil.com. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. All right, and we are back on the Mark Hoke Show on KDWN. Professional wrestling news and entertainment at its finest. Why? Because, well, we're entertaining and we're darn good at what we do. Right, Andrew Fishfane? Oh, absolutely. There you go. And, of course, Joe DeFalco from Future Stars of Wrestling. There's a huge card coming up. Seasons Beatings. I love the Seasons Beatings cards. It's, a, it's just a fun name. You know, and you know that just means somebody's going to get hurt. Great main event. Matt Vandegrift taking on Gregory Sharp. As, uh, in your, and you're unifying those championships, Joe? Well, first off, uh, it was announced as the main event, but the card is pretty much expanded, so it may not be the main event. We got Hammerstone actually going to be defending the title also, so that could be the main event. But then we're also doing a four-way contenders match where the winner will wrestle the FSW heavyweight champion at no escape. And so far, the first three names signed are... 
Hammerstone's buddy and former FSW heavyweight champion, Nevada State champion, tag champion Graves. You got the Grand Slam winner, uh, Remy Marcel, and you have Ice Williams. So that's three of the four names we're negotiating to make sure another former champion gets added to that four-way match. So that card is definitely, uh, I guess we're saving the best for last, the last arena show of the year. And we're treating this one almost as if it is a casino show. So it is loaded from top to bottom. You know, the six woman tag that has Viva Van, the women's champ on one side and Maserati on the other. So it's definitely Danny Limelight just messes me. Hey, am I still booked? Because he saw the cards. Like, of course, you're still booked. He's the number one contender for the No Limits title. So, you know, Vandegrift has to have the fallout. And, if, you know, he's wrestling sharp title versus title. And we'll see what comes out of there. But Danny Limelight is already penciled in as the challenger uh, at No Escape on January 29th. So wow. a lot of good stuff. This is a loaded card. And it sounds like there will be a lot of beatings going on this season. So check it out. It's going to be at the FSW Arena on Saturday night. So Yes, way it. better than a loaded potato, my friend. Yes, <laughs> that is for sure. Uh, well, you know, there was a loaded card in uh, NXT last night. I got to say, that was a fun, fun show as they debuted the Iron Survivor matches. That's right, everybody. It wasn't a Survivor match. There was no Iron thrown around. It was both Iron Survivor matches. And uh, you know, I, got a, I got a chance to watch some of this card last night. Before we talk about the Iron Survivor matches, though, we had a main roster invasion for the Tag Team Championships of NXT as the New Day rolls into NXT, taking on Pretty Deadly, who is a, a, a darn good tag team. Those guys, I like them. Uh, but the New Day are now the NXT Tag Team Champions. Guys, is this good or bad to have the New Day, I guess, I hate to say it, slumming it a little bit? Yeah, well, it gets uh, the... I think... Go ahead, Joe. I was going to say, I think it's good because... You know what? They they kind of need a break from the main roster. It's like there's nothing left for them to do there. So at least with NXT, it gives them the star power and, you know, hopefully a little bit of run. It's way different than Apollo Crews. You know, he was, he was never a big deal on the main roster. New Day are like, you know, future Hall of Famers. So if they can give the younger guys that rub and be the tag champs and then put over somebody, you know, whether it's the same team or, or eventually put somebody over. I, I think it's, it's great for business. Fish. What'd you think? I think it's, it's, it's a good idea. I, I think that new day was getting a little stale because, you know, you can only fight the Usos so many times, but I also think it, that uh, it's, we're glossing over the, the headline, which is that Kofi Kingston, I believe just set a record 15 time now tag team champion. Okay. Which I think is very impressive. And, uh, you know, I, you know, they did the same thing with Dolph Ziggler for a little bit, had a program as the NXT champion for a little while. And I think they're kind of doing that with New Day. And I don't, I, have no, I don't have an issue with it. That's what the NXT, that's what NXT is for. Well, and I, you know, it's funny that you mentioned about the, the tag team title ring record because Booker T was the one that had that record and he was announcing and he sure didn't want them to win. Boy, Booker T was going off on New Day being there, but pretty deadly was, uh, is a, a, a darn good up and coming tag team. And I kind of think this was a test to see how they would handle wrestling with the new day. And I, I thought they answered the bell and there was a, there was a funny spot in there too. I, I didn't like the twerk spot, but I did like the four way Eddie Guerrero cheating spot. I don't know if you guys yeah, saw that. That, that, that was hilarious. But they tossed the belt to each other. Yeah. They, they, the guys brought a belt into the ring to, to smash one another. And they all faked getting hit by the belt and were laid out which was an old Eddie Guerrero trick. And the referee's looking at all four of these guys lying on the ground with a belt between them and not knowing what to do and just kind of said, eh, screw you guys. Get up. Let's go. So that was kind of cool. A little, little homage to Eddie on that. Yeah, it was a fun little spot. Yeah. So, of course, then we had the, the two Iron Survivor matches. And uh, you know, not so much who won. Of course, you know, really nice wins uh, for uh, Roxanne Perez who is really looking like she's going to be a superstar. Uh, and then we also had uh, Grayson Waller winning the men's match. 
But just a general impression of these matches, if you didn't know the rules on how this worked, they started off with two guys in the ring. They'd wrestle for five minutes, and then every five minutes someone else would come in and you'd get five people in the ring. You were trying to get the most uh, pinfalls or submissions. If you got pinned or submitted, you went into the penalty box for a minute and a half. Yeah, 90 seconds. So they had a plexiglass box set up for everybody, which played into the match a little bit. I had, and you know, honestly, I wasn't too sure about this when I first heard about, but I thought it was pretty solid. It was a neat concept. Uh, Fish, what did you think of the Iron Survivor match? I, I like the idea that they're still trying to come up with new ideas because you got to remember at some point Hell in a Cell was new, and Elimination Chamber was new, and now there there are icons in in the WWE lexicon. I think that this is the same sort of thing. I, I like the idea of this match. The only thing I didn't like is that I, I wasn't so sure about Grayson Waller getting two wins for double pinning somebody. That was actually I thought that was a cool spot. That was a nice heel spot getting uh, getting two right off the bat when he came in. And Joe, of course, you help structure matches with FSW, and that one I could imagine is fairly difficult to produce and make sure that everything flows right. Uh, what did you think about the Iron Survivor match concept? Well, I thought, you know, despite the fact that we trained her, of course, but it's like we just did the big turn with with, uh, Zoe Stark, you know, and that was great. They gave her the first pin, but it's, you know, that should have been, you know, I think the moment for her to, you know, get a big victory and instead of not winning, it's like, you know, this big heel turn, she's going singles, and then she doesn't win the big match. So it's like, you know, where do you go? Again, there's so many concepts. I I remember the one years ago where it was like five guys in the match and whoever got the last pin, and it was 15 or 20 minutes, I remember. And I always remember it was like when he was hot. It was the Brian Kendrick that was somehow in there. And I was like, hey, the Brian Kendrick, he was the heavyweight champion for about three minutes. And, you know, and obviously that one didn't take. I, I like that idea a little bit better. It, it, it's easy to understand. You know what I mean? And while the other one was, it was 20 minutes and pinfalls count and whoever's the last person standing at the end of 20 minutes, they're the champion. So, you know, with the Iron Survivor, it was something they want to try. And I, I guess doing it NXT is better. No harm, no foul. If it doesn't work, you just move on. If it does, if it sticks, then it's something that you can utilize down the line. So, you know, you can never, you, you can never be mad when somebody's trying to do something because in the wrestling business, it's very hard to come up with something that hadn't been done before. No, it's sort of like Major League Baseball with they're trying the pitch clock and, and the larger bases and things like that and no shift. They're all trying it in the minor leagues first and then they bring it to the majors. Yeah, and I was well, uh, I was trying to when I when I watched this match, uh, the matches I was sitting there saying to myself, okay, what? How could you improve this? And you know, saying like, well, do you make it longer? Well, if you make it longer, it kind of screws up the time intervals a little bit. And uh, you know, the penalty box. Well, you know, if you were in there longer, that would take you out of the match for maybe too long. So you know, I I I really give him credit. I think this was. Um, you know, I couldn't it, you start it with all five competitors in the ring at the same time though versus coming in in intervals. Well, it, you know, there's because but, that, because, but there's pluses and minuses to coming in I know, but being the, the, early the, but is the, late. Right, so. but the two people that start have an unfair advantage cuz you can get a pin or two before anyone else comes into the match. See, but on the Right. Other- so the final well, it was five people, right? So right. what does that mean that the last person came in at the 15 minute mark? Uh 10 minutes to go. Yeah, it was 10 minutes to go. See, but on the but right. then, but so then was, on, so you're right, it was 25 minutes, right? Right. So then on the but then right. the, on the other side of it, that last person that comes in is completely fresh while everybody else has been beating the crap out of each other. Yeah, but so I, they they still are at a disadvantage because someone, like I said, if they're coming in, someone's already got a pin or two. You're already one or two behind. Yeah. Well, there's there's an advantage and a disadvantage. Right, and it's the same thing as being in the penalty box. Well, is doesn't that keep you fresh? You're only in there for a minute and a half out of 25. Yeah, that's yeah. There, there were there, like I said, there were there's some interesting little twists on this, and I, and I could see down the road that you could do some interesting things yeah, I, in I, this I just, match. I just don't see any reason why you couldn't start all five guys at once, like a fatal five way. 
the way you would you'd start that kind of match. Yeah, I I think I think part of it is you know they were advancing some storylines in that too. So you know they brought out a couple guys that were feuding to start the match off. Yeah, it was you know the one thing that I just like to see. I want to see the penalty box turned into a hot tub. That's what I want. It's also a it's a no DQ match, correct? Right. Yeah, I mean you know so. If if you get penalized, you know, go get in the go get in the sauna for a little bit or the hot tub and relax for a while. Take it easy. I think that would be cool. You could drown somebody in there too. No, nobody likes the hot tub idea. No, no, I don't either. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, that's, uh, well, it depends. Is it, uh, if you drown somebody, does it count as a submission? Then I guess it's a good idea. It, it would be both a submission and a pinfall. I think yeah. the possibilities are endless in the Iron Survivor match. So, yeah, so a, a pretty solid night for NXT, you know, kind of getting them back on track a little bit. I thought Apollo Crews actually showed decently in that match against Ron Breaker. Yeah, and, you know, we had a you know pretty good main event. I mean, overall, it was a you know, decent night for NXT. So hopefully generate a little more interest for those guys. All right. And, uh, well, speaking of generating interest, you know, if you need to make some money, you know, we would certainly appreciate you. Checking out our good friends at Trading Made Easy. Go to tradingmadeasy.com. Sign up for one of them there. Free seminars where you can learn about the world of automated day trading. Maybe even give away that, get up that nine to five job and make a little extra coin. Just check them out. The website is tradingmadeasy.com. It's so simple. They've only got one E in there. Or you can give them a call at 800 971 4160. It's 800 971 Four one six zero eight hundred nine seven one forty one sixty trading mad easy dot com and uh, you know get in on that software and make yourself some coin. It's Christmas time, man. You know, time to pull extra bank in that pocket, right, fish? Absolutely. All right. So we're gonna take a break and when we come back, Ring of Honor was doing their thing today, last night as well. And boy, I'll tell you, people getting beat up, titles changing hands. Joe got some protégés with some belts. It was something else. So we're going to talk about what happened at Final Battle last night when we return on the Mark Oak Show here on KDWN, 101.5 FM, 720 AM. Stick around for more, everybody. We'll be right back. Tired of the same boring food when you're out for breakfast or lunch? I'm Mark Hoke, and I have an idea for a different place to go with unique food you're sure to enjoy, and that's Unique Eats. Take some time out of your busy day and stop on in to Unique Eats, featuring celebrity chef Dominic Tedesco and his friendly staff. Whether it's a great start to your day with one of Unique Eats' amazing omelets, or lunch with his incredible sandwiches, pasta, and award-winning pizzas, you'll be in for a fantastic dining experience that won't break the bank. Unique Eats also features a smoothie bar and full vegetarian menu as well. Plus, if you need catering, you can count on Unique Eats no matter what the occasion. So what are you waiting for? Get on over to Unique Eats at 3100 South Durango, Suite 100, open daily until 3 p.m. Call them at 702-992-3038 or visit UniqueEatsLV.com for their full menu and catering info. Break out of the same old routine and have a great meal at Unique Eats today. You're listening to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Vegas, The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Now, here again is Mark Hoke. All right. Yes. Wrestle, 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 everybody. Pro wrestling at its finest. We rule the multiverse. In some of them. I, I don't know. I think, I think in some fish is a villain. Sure, why not? Come on, fish. Come on board. Have some fun. Let's go. Wow. Fish is quiet today. Joe DeFalco, of course, never quiet. Of course, running FSW Vegas, keeping things I'm never there. quiet. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, but, by the way, I do want to mention, if you want to keep up on what's going on with FSW Vegas and the entire Las Vegas wrestling scene, uh, say hi to our friends at LasVegasWrestlingScene.com. Brian and the team have you covered or everything happening on the Las Vegas wrestling scene. So check them out at Las Vegas wrestling scene.com. Now, last night we had a ring of honor pay-per-view and dear Lord, a lot of great reviews coming out of this, but some painful happenings in this one 
with uh, some people losing teeth. We had a, a pretty wild finish in the main event. Uh, you know, a lot of matches to cover there. Uh, but, you know, of course, I, I have to make sure Joe gets his props because we do have new uh, women or uh, six man tag team champions as the embassy, which, of course, included Toleo and Brian Cage are now the six man tag team champions knocking off Dalton Castle and the boys. So the Peacock is uh, beltless again. But, uh, you know, congratulations there. Joey had to feel good about uh, Cage getting some love. Yeah, actually, uh, Brian was uh, hitting me up the last week. He was looking to get some training in over at the school. And it's good to see that uh, they're making him uh, a focal point. And especially for Tio, for Toa, he, he's he's a lot more inexperienced. So he, he really needs to get the work in. And the con guy looks really good with them. So, you know... Dalton Castle and the boys, that was great that they had the belt. They're not even signed to the company. So it's good to have that going. A little disappointing hearing that, hey, we got a TV deal, but it's not on TV. So I, you know, that's a little confusing when I hear that it's going to be on their own streaming service. But, you know, like I said, you know, if, if Zoe Stark would have won, we would have had, you know, big winners in New Japan, uh, Ring of Honor and NXT this weekend. Unfortunately, she came up a little short, but you know, we'll, the alumni will definitely take that. Yep, absolutely. Uh, we also have a new women's champion in Ring of Honor, as Athena, with her new attitude, knocks off Mercedes Martinez. So Athena picking up a title there. So she's been playing the bad, bad girl and beating people up all over the place. Uh, Wheeler Yuta wins the ROH Pure Championship. As he defeats Daniel Garcia, we have new Ring of Honor tag team champions. And boy, I'll tell you what, they have, this is the third meeting between FTR and the Briscoes. And a lot of the reviews coming out saying this was the best of the three. They had a dog collar match that they were <laughs> they were having trouble keeping an eye on everything because the two guys were the two groups of guys were separated a little bit and they were all over the place. But man, some tough spots in there. J- Briscoe taken one of the Briscoes taken a, a whipping with a dog with a chain from the top rope as he got thrown down onto a pile of chairs outside the ring. Dax Harwood loses a tooth in this match. I mean, this was this was a brutal, brutal match. Even the referee got busted up. But FDR and Briscoe's hooking it up, and Briscoe's win the title, uh, win the titles. Uh, and of course, FDR lost also on Dynamite too. So. Two sets of those belts off the waist of FTR, guys. What do you think about the, the Briscoes winning and FTR going down here? I think the Briscoes winning is always good because they are obviously a great tag team. I, I, You know, FTR right now is probably one of the best, if not the best, tag team in wrestling. And to have them booked like this to lose twice, I don't know how good or bad that is. Joe, what you, what'd you think of the Briscoes getting the titles last night? Uh, I thought it was great. Unfortunately, we can't... Uh... See uh, a Dem Boys promo on uh, AEW Dynamite on Wednesday, unfortunately. But I, I think the Bris- Briscoes are awesome, and, and it, it's a shame that the spotlight is right there. They're working with the company, and, and they can't be seen because they're they're a fun tag team. You know, win or lose, they're going to give you a great match, but they're entertaining as can be, and. You know, whatever that higher up is that is uh, disallowing them, it's got to be somebody who's really high up the food chain because every time the Briscoes have been there, it's like, oh, it's one of the best matches they've seen. And it's always involved the Briscoes. So uh, what what it could mean for FTR is they're getting rid of all the belts because maybe they're making a journey uh, somewhere else once again. That is a possibility because they're also going to be defending their New Japan titles at Wrestle Kingdom coming up too. At the beginning you know, of the year, Queen so. Sweep, uh, you know, Sasha maybe uh, Triple H. Kingdom. Yeah, we're we're going to begin to Wrestle Kingdom in a little bit, but uh, of course, if you don't know what's going on with the Briscoes, uh, quite a while ago. I mean, I and I'm, I was trying to find the year on this, but it, it's been I think at least a, almost a decade now that. Uh, Jay Briscoe made some comments about gay marriage that had didn't go over well. And Warner brothers discovery has said, we're not putting the Briscoes on TV because of this. 
I mean, this has been a long time, though, guys. And it, isn't it about time to let this go? Well, you know, we, we've the, had these. I'm sorry, go ahead, Fish. Lee. I was gonna say, unfortunately, sorry. the internet is forever. So, I, I you know, I. I'm I'm torn between because being I mean if he had said something about it at another race or anything it would we would be just as harsh and we wouldn't say it's necessarily time to let it go. Joe, what do you think? You know, a couple of years ago, the, the the whole movement came out and and the cancel culture and the Me Too, and we had one of the brightest stars in wrestling, and you know he had an issue with his ex girlfriend, and by the time it came out, uh, the incident with him and her happened probably a year and a half earlier, and the year and a half that passed. You know, the guy went to rehab. The guy admitted his his alcohol issues. He tried to better himself. And eventually, when do you give a person a second chance? And I actually tried to book him again, you know, a couple of years later, thinking, hey, you know what? This guy, he did his time. You know, he went in and he got help. And it wasn't, you know, a Joey Ryan thing. It wasn't, you know, with some of the other guys. It was it was him and his girlfriend, a domestic issue. But for some reason, even though he got help and tried to better himself, he stayed canceled. And, you know, Mike Tyson went to jail and he's come back and, and, and he's still – Mr. Cool, it's Mike Tyson, and he gets gigs, and he gets all this other stuff. And it's weird because you've seen stuff in the professional wrestling business. You know, over the last six months, Chris Dickinson, you know, came out with Christina Von Erie. And for some reason, like, it's just been – she tried to put it out everywhere, and nobody seemed to care. Yep. And, and it's really weird. It's like they're picking and choosing. And like even for Joey Ryan, I'm not going to defend anything, but the guy went and got a job at at Disney on the Jungle Cruise and lost his job because people <laughs> wouldn't even allow that to happen. Like yeah. how the guy can't even make a living. Yeah. And oh, I'm sorry, Joe. I hate to cut you off, but we are getting ready to head out for this first hour. But yeah, so we'll see if we get the get the Briscoes back on board at some point. Hey, stick around for a second hour. We got to finish wrapping up final battle and uh, some Wrestle Kingdom news including someone might be making their return to wrestling out there from WWE it's going to be a, a fun second hour so stick around everybody we will be is right it even back. Marie? Is it no, even Marie? no uh. we'll be right back Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show, like us on Facebook at The Mark Hoke Show, and visit MarkHokeShow.com to keep up with everything happening with the show. And remember to check out all of our archive shows on YouTube at The Mark Hoke Show and download our podcasts at MarkHokeShow.Podbean.com and all your favorite podcast applets. So join The Mark Hoke Show family today, and thanks for listening.